so for for the paper I, I give to them, mm -hmm. usually I ask you guys to to find the paper by yourself. But mm -hmm. if you really want help to for me, that's the paper I can send you guys. And um, mm -hmm. so usually people students just volunteer for the presentation. Um, I give I give them I give you guys like the most 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 likely gonna be most recent publication. Um, yeah, that's that's basically what I do for for selecting the papers. Okay. Uh, I recommend um, find your own. Yeah, you get more time to <laughs> read it. Find your own. <laughs> hey, I give you lots of Friday. It's not you too did. bad. I know. <laughs> okay, are right, you guys are we ready? We're ready. Okay, so um, welcome to Journal Club. Uh, my name is Nate. It's my first ever, so uh, hope it works out. Um, okay, so anyways, uh, I want to start you guys off on um, this little thing I brought for you guys. So um, I was I was looking for brachiopods, but I couldn't find any. So this is the next best thing. Oh, um, nice. oysters. So <laughs> I work on oysters anyway. So perfect. Right. Good job. Yeah. Good. <laughs> okay. So uh, the paper that I was assigned to read this time was calcite fiber formation in modern brachiopod shells. Brachiopods are not exactly oysters or they're not even mollusks, right? but uh, um, it, it works out, okay, you know, it's fine. Um, the, it turns out that the shell formation and the structure of the shell is pretty similar to mollusks anyway, so we can learn how, a lot about how, them. How many shells does they usually have? Two. Or two shells, right? Yeah. I'll just kind of making it clear, because okay. I don't feel like everybody... Don't worry, I, I'm going to explain this. Sure. Like, okay, so yeah, this paper is by Rhoda et al. Um, hopefully you guys read it. If you didn't, I don't blame you, okay? <laughs> So let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about uh, an actual bivalve mollusk first. This is a clam, right? This is a mollusk, and it has two shells. The shell's made of calcium carbonate, and it's secreted by, you know, the one of the three main molluscan features, right? If you guys remember, the foot, the radula, and... No? I wrote it on here. The mantle, okay? <laughs> so look, the mantle is the organ that secretes the shell in the form of a liquid, and then it basically calcifies into calcium carbonate. So you see the mantle's right here. Oops, it's touch screen. The mantle's right here, it just keeps secreting a shell this way and elongates the shell, right? Okay, so if we want to compare that to a brachiopod real quick, it turns out a brachiopod, which looks a lot uglier on the inside. This is the first time I've ever seen the inside of a brachiopod, but it also has the mantle, the thin mm -hmm. membrane that is, you know, attached to the shell and it's constantly secreting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to be talking about brachiopods instead of mollusks, but let's just make sure we know the differences real quick. Here are some pictures of brachiopods that I found online, and most of the pictures you're going to see are going to be fossils. All right, that's because these guys are super old, primitive. They were dominating during like the Cambrian times, but nowadays it's been mostly re replaced by bivalves. Right? Um, so what's the difference right, between this and a bivalve? Can you guys see any right off the bat? Okay, we'll get into it, right? Um, we still have brachiopods, right? Here's some modern examples. They're not as, you know, they don't have the, those defined lines, but they still do if you look really closely, okay? And then you guys also notice it has something else that a bivalve does not have. So let's look at the difference real quick. That's a brachiopod. This is a mollusk, right? Um, the main difference, cosmetically, that you guys can see is the lines, right? Look at the lines on the brachiopod are vertical versus the lines on the actual mollusk are true growth lines, so they go horizontally like that. All right, so that's one. The second thing is that long thing I mentioned. It's called a peduncle, and that peduncle thing is basically what it uses to attach to the ground. Okay, so if it attaches to the ground, it's truly sessile and it doesn't move at all, whereas these ones can actually dig and hop around and stuff like that. Okay, so we got a peduncle, and because the peduncle has to fit on the shell, then when you look at the shell from the sideways, it turns out that the shells are asymmetric because you need to put mm -hmm. the peduncle inside there, right? Compare that to a regular clam. These are definitely bilaterally symmetric right here. So what's what's that very end tip of the peduncle in there? That thing? I don't know. So it, it, if it's attached to the ground, yeah. like how do they attach to the ground? They just manually grab or how, how, how do they do that? It's probably like a hold fast, but I didn't look into that. Because the reason I'm asking this, you know, for a lot of bivalves or, or other stuff, they have like uh, bites, you know, some kind of thread. Oh, and some a of the thread. Yeah. 
and it have have some kind of you know adhesive proteins underneath to to attach. But for this one, I don't see that kind of thing ever anywhere. It just does have like peduncle. Uh, I mean, like the probably the adhesive proteins are at the end of it. Okay. I mean, this is not like a. I mean, I'm not very image. familiar with this species this is, either. Uh, I just like abyssal thread is really small. Right, but it's, it's usually like, usually at the end or the, 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 the root area of that thing, of the foot. But here, for yeah. this one, I don't see any. You know, I, just, I just can't see any, so. Okay. But, well, well I guess it's, it's not. <laughs> this it's, is not important, because right, right, like, right. The, the focus of this paper is about shell formation. So this I'm is gonna ask you a whole lot of questions that's not, not even related to the shell formation, uh, but I'm just curious. Why? I'm curious. <laughs> okay, well, if I don't know, it's not my fault. <laughs> that's okay. All right, so do we know the differences between mollusk and the cosmetic differences, right? Yeah. Okay, they don't call asymmetric shells and vertical lines, right? Those are the things we're looking for. Okay, so let's get on to the paper. Um, figure one, right? Figure one shows this cross section of a shell. Okay, it shows two parts, which basically means this paper is divided into two sections the actual shell itself and the formation of the shell, the secretion, right? So we'll talk about the first one. Let's only focus on the top, the actual shell. You notice this part is actually tissue, right? <coughs> so, shell first, right? Look at the shell first. We can see that one, two, three, right? It has three layers. As you guys can see there, the periostracum and then the two mineralized layers, right? So here, if you guys read the paper, it would show the periostracum is the really, really thin organic layer on top. Okay, you guys see it's a black line. That's it. It's, it's not, it doesn't have any like depth to it. Okay, so the periostracum on the top, peri for outside, and then the primary layer right here. Underneath the primary layer is the fibrous layer. Both of these two are mineralized with calcium carbonate, mm -hmm. and they're involved in two different growth processes. So for example, um, if you want to make the shell bigger and longer, like from here to here, then you would want to use the primary layer. Okay, mm -hmm. and the reason for that is if you like to look over here, the if you want to get longer, the primary layer is the one sticking out the furthest. Okay, so elongate that part to make the shell bigger. And if you want to make it thicker, then you can't use a primary layer because if you look, the primary layer is covered up by the fibrous layer right here, and so it has no access to any of the mantle cells. So it cannot increase in uh, thickness. Uh -huh. Does that make sense? Like, so the fibrous layer is blocking it, and so because of that, because it's blocking it, then if you want to thicken the shell, you have to thicken the fibrous layer. All right, and the fibrous layer is in constant contact with the mantle cells, so that's going to be basically like the focus of this paper, okay? Because the shell growth occurs there the most often, right? Okay, so let's talk about the actual shell, right? The actual shell besides the periostracum is made of three mineralized layers, okay? The outer primary inner fibers we just mentioned, and also the innermost columnar layer, which was not addressed in this paper because the bracket pods that they used did not have that one. So let's just ignore that one. Okay, continue on, right? The first image shown here, guess what? I just literally just learned this. This was created via atomic force microscopy. Yeah, I've, I've never even like heard of that before histology. Okay, and this, is a, this is one of the reasons I feel, I feel like this paper is good for you guys. Because mm -hmm. yeah. there's just pure images. If you look at the entire paper, mm -hmm. all images with different, like PEM, SEM, and... Yeah, if you yeah, asked me yeah. earlier, I thought this was SEM. Yeah, well, right, yeah. but it has a large, much, much larger uh, magnification. Right, right. right. Yeah. So yeah, atomic force microscopy gives us this image of the junction between the primary and the um, fibrous layer. Okay, so they call this the primary layer, and they call this the fibrous layer, but the really interesting thing that they wanted to point out was basically their separation is not very clear. Okay, it's hard to tell when you're going on here when you're fine, turning into that. Yeah, I have a question. I have a hard time to understand the orientation for this one. So the primary layer, was that close to the hinge? Or what's the no, direction? This doesn't, this doesn't have to be close to the hinge. This is just a cross section of the shell sideways. See, this is just atomic force microscopy on this. It's a cross section. Yeah, yeah they did it. This is the side of the shell. So if you look from this side, you can see the actual shell. But right. we're looking at the side now. The shell. Oh, so, so they the cut it. The clam or the brachiopod rather than the top. So they the use it for you know for the AFM. You you have to have a certain 
surface in there, so the the probe can start to detect, right? Mm -hmm. So I guess that's like they made a cut. Yeah. And they look at the outside. Yeah, they, they probably made a cut and they looked right uh -huh. at along that border. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's what we got, and then the, at that border, there's no very well defined distinction. It just kind of magically turns into it. There's no like warning, like there's no like other cells that are in between. It's just first is the primary layer, and all of a sudden it's fibers. Yeah, which by the way, this is what they call these fibers, these plates, which in my opinion look more like shingles, mm -hmm. right? Um, they call those fibers though, so we'll go with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, like I said, the divide between is not very well defined, and we can see the same problem with the, the next images right over here in figure three. This is from figure three, this is from figure two, but, um, or one. Uh, this divide, right, it just like suddenly turns into it. There's no other cells in between that kind of prepare you for that. Hmm. Um, the fibrous layer here is shown even, blown up even more than over here. You guys can see these things. And it turns out this is actually something in the fibrous layer. And it's not calcium carbonate either. This part is. That layer that separates each of the fibers is actually supposed to be in, sorry, an organic layer in between. So if you blow this part up right here, then you get this, which they say is some sort of organic layer in between the fibers. I don't know if I believe that or not, because I can't tell. And this looks all the same to me. It just looks as if bumps there, right? Okay, so yeah, between the fibers, the calcium carbonate fibers, there's an organic layer. All right, so then let's look at the organic layer a little further with these images from figure two. Um, these images from figure two show two different views. This is straight up, down, right, at the fibers, and then this one is kind of like a, like a transverse view from the angle, right? So if you're looking at it from an angle versus from this, then you can see different features, such as this part. The white arrows right here are pointing to, like, you guys see, like, a lot of parallel lines? Those parallel lines is what they call the plywood-like structure of the fibers, okay? So, like, you put, like, a bunch of plywood on top of each other, and then they also talk about these portions right here, which again, the breaks between the fibers is supposed to be an organic layer. I don't even know how they figured that out because, like, there's nobody who can tell what that black stuff is in between. Like, what do you guys think it is? It's just an empty space. <laughs> the uh, you know one thing you have to keep in mind for the imaging uh, technique, especially yeah. for high magnification imaging technique. There are many, many cases, a lot of things have to depend on the experience. Oh, There's no like gold standard there to yeah. guide you through. Uh, if you use the like, same equipment for many, many years, you might have better sense oh, compared to the, to the new, yeah, to the new beast. So, right. Um, and I, I, you know, it's, it's common. When, when the paper, when I look at this paper, I see everything or use the, you know, the imaging system, I kind of have the feeling that they don't do any of the molecular work. There's a lot of <laughs> conclusions. They're based on their kind of More speculation, yeah. yeah, or, you know, their, their, uh, their hypothesis. So it's, it's, it's common. Yeah, okay, so you're gonna see in this paper, it's basically all visual. What yeah. do they yeah. mean with organic layer? Oh, there's a, like, um, there's like a layer of like proteins between each of the fibers. Proteins. So, I mean, so isn't the fibers also protein? No, 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 that's calcium carbonate. It's just they call, they call it a that fiber? a fiber. Yeah, because it's in the shape of a fiber. Oh, okay. It's just a structure. See, this is a this is the one thing about you know if those guys are not in this field and they don't really use the right word on it, they just describe what they look like based on the morphology. That's yeah. the problem. You know, sometimes it's cause confusion just by the term they use. That's what I was confused yeah. by because they called it fibers and then I thought, well, are fibers inorganic material? Or how do we know? <laughs> Maybe I read it wrong. Maybe no, the fibers refer are, to these things. These you are the guy who actually focused on I, I tried. <laughs> <laughs> I tried so far, so good. <laughs> okay, so let's just assume that the fibers are in the custom carbon then. Sure. We'll go with that. Mm -hmm. So um, if we look at the top-down view this time, to look at each of these things. Now, I also don't like this picture. This picture just shows each of the individual fibers, right? Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. They make a note that each fiber has four surfaces. An apical, which means tip, right? Concave surfaces right here. 
two lateral surfaces, which are also concave, and a proximal convex surface, which is right here. There you go. That's a nice one, but they cherry picked that. Look at the rest of them. Yeah. <laughs> Look, this one has like two, three straight sides, and and uh, maybe a convex proximal one, right? So I don't even know if I believe this. Hmm. Yeah, and look at what which okay there. That's the apical. Those are the two. The imagination. You, know, you gotta use your imagination. Really. <laughs> and that's the proximal convex surface. So apparently the Sosa had those four surfaces, and it's illustrated best mm. right here. Okay. Um, when they draw this schematically, then they're gonna just use this. You know, so we'll see that. We'll see that. Okay. Does that sound okay so far? Mm -hmm. They're very good with the organic or the, the mineralized portion. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So now let's talk about the second part, right? The second part, which involves the shell building, the secretionary process. Um, we're going to focus on this, OME. It stands for outer mantle epithelium. Okay, epithelium is that tissue that we learned about. Mantle is the organ that does what again? Secretes, it. Secretes the shell, right? Yeah, and it's the outer because there's the inner one too, right? Okay, so the outer mantle epithelium starts secreting the shell because it's in constant contact. Right, we'll see how that works, or at least how they describe it, right? Let's take a look at this. Figure four. Figure four apparently shows the action of the secretion in progress. Okay, and this is basically, I, I think this is just a hypothesis, right? They just look at the images and they tell which one looks like it's not finished and which one looks finished. Okay, I'll get into that in a second. But first, I want to really quickly talk about the methods by which they prepare these samples. They had like a bunch of different preparation methods. Um, this first one was prepared via chemical fixation. So they used certain chemicals to try to dissolve the shell and look at the properties of it. Mm -hmm. The rest of them were all high pressure frozen plus freeze substituted. I don't know what that means, but it has something to do with a bunch of chemicals that were used. And with those chemicals and the freezing, they are able to prevent shrinkage of the tissue. So it's kind of like, you know, what you were talking about with the ethanol slowly to dry it up so it doesn't shrink the tissue. This is, this is SEM, right? Uh, this is SEM. SEM. Yes. Yeah. I think for SEM and, and uh, uh, TEM, uh, both needs to, the sample to be... Completely dry. It, yeah. Extremely dry. It's in a vacuum. Right? right, because, you know, the reason is it's need ions, right? I mean, the electron. Yeah. So the electron has need to hit the tissue either to bounce it back or penetrate if there's any water, or even the chamber has any of the air, that's gonna mess up your ions. Right. I mean the, the, the electron. So mm -hmm. that's why the samples to be needs to be extremely dry, yeah. and the chamber needs to be vacuum. Yeah, and then if you take the water out, then the cells change shape. Yep. So they use these methods to um, prevent them Keep from them. shrinking. Mm -hmm. um, also, this one has an advantage over that one is it prevents dissolution of the shell. Mm -hmm. right. So because they use these two methods to treat them they were able to actually make a few inferences about the shell composition, mm -hmm. right? So first, with the chemically fixed sample, they were actually able to dissolve parts of the shell. So since they were able to dissolve parts of the shell, they hypothesized it's possibly something called amorphous calcium carbonate, which is, I'm guessing, a weaker form of calcium carbonate that dissolves using those chemicals, mm -hmm. right? And I'll explain that in a second, why I think it's the weaker yeah. form, right? But then they did secondary tests to determine whether that was true or not, right? So when they did the high pressure frozen ones, three of them out of five of them were done at pH nine of basic solution. And the thing about amorphous calcium carbonate is it dissolves in pH nine. So since they did not dissolve in the other five samples, then they concluded that it was not amorphous calcium carbonate. Okay, so I guess it's the regular calcium carbonate. <coughs> Okay, so let's go back to this and talk about what's actually happened, right? Why do they think this is mineralization in progress? Because they just look at the boundaries of each of the fibers and determine that some of them look completed and some of them don't. You wanna know how they tell? Solid versus fuzzy. Mm. That's literally it. Look, see this one with the red arrows? It makes sense, right? That's the one that's not completely formed yet. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are solid, these black ones, and this one right here, oops. It's a touch screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. The, this one right here is not fuzzy, and these black ones, so those are completed. They, they say that this line right here that is completed, that's not fuzzy, is that organic layer between the fibers that I was talking about earlier. 
And so the, the bacteriophage puts on the organic layer after they're finished making the fibers. When they say it's that layer, do they actually test them to confirm? Uh, no. They just look at the images. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so this is hypothesized to be in progress, where, where that one is the completed one. Okay, so we can look at this even further with figure five, right? Figure five shows basically even further that um, this one actually doesn't look, even look as good as the previous one because this is what they're saying is the fuzzy part, when that's the non fuzzy part. See, fuzzy versus non fuzzy. So this one's even harder to detect. They look even closer. TEM for this one, mm. and they're saying that this part is the part that has not finished making the organic layer, and this part has finished because it looks similar enough to that part. Right, so this is definitely finished because there's another fiber going right here. Yeah, for the for the for the B, sorry, I'm looking for the B. What is the the, the one labeled with M? Oh, M is a mitochondria. Was that mitochondria? I think so. Huh, this is a little different. Or maybe the, the angel. Well, they cut. these are supposed to be organelles, so I'm guessing M stands for mitochondria. That one is rough ER, though. Okay. Doesn't look like it, does it? Mm. <laughs> Can you see the yeah, that, I guess it's a different angle they cut yeah. Yeah, or something. Yeah. yeah, so I'm pretty sure it's mitochondria. Okay. Yeah, so, anyways, um, whether you believe it or not, this is the finished part with the organic membrane, and this part that's slightly fuzzier is the unfinished part. Okay, so this is basically what they're using to tell um, how shell form forms, right? The, sh the fiber is secreted, the calcium carbonate, and then afterward they close it off with the organic membrane. If the organic membrane has not been closed off yet, then it has still more secretion to do before that. Okay. Um, the second thing that we can get from this image is uh, basically amantial epithelial cells next to each other are connected via cell junctions. It's right here. So here's one cell, here's the other cell. It's connected via a desmosome. Hey, that's a familiar word, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll talk more about desmosomes in the next couple of slides. All right. Again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm going to show off my histology sure. knowledge, you know? Sure. Right? I got the desmosomes down, mm. all right? So desmosome is the cell junction that holds three things together. Okay, so continuing on, right? This is where we go even further into the junction between the fiber and the mantle cell. All right, so back then here, we we're just looking at the cells and roughly where it's meeting with the fiber. This time we're gonna find two separate examples where they say that this one is unfinished and this one's finished. This one's a little more convincing because this is these lines are not as dark as these ones, but they could Photoshop that, <laughs> right? Nah, yeah. they can't do that. If yeah, I mean, I know they can't do it, but look, this is literally just a lighter gray than this black. Oh, if they do that, that would, yeah. I, I, like, let's just trust them. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully it's okay, right? Yeah, yeah. So if we do trust them and this is the lighter, fuzzy part, then what does it tell you about this one versus this one? It's more finished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's still this one's not finished yet, mm -hmm. right? And then it's going to have to secrete the organic membrane right away here. Okay, so once it is done, though, like in this one, okay, this one's done, then you can actually, or they can actually see um, other cell junctions in there. Okay, so right here, the mantle epithelial cell is connected to the connective tissue via hemidesmosomes, which we all know, because the hemidesmosome is like a half desmosome that only has one side, right? That half desmosome that connects to one side is basically connected to something else, not another mantle epithelium, right? If it were another mantle epithelium, it would be a desmosome, mm -hmm. right? But if you connect it to something else, we have hemidesmosome. And look, when it's finished, it connects, the, the mantle cell connects to the actual shell via, guess what, hemidesmosomes. How does it do that? Because that organic layer that it secretes after it's finished with the fiber uh, turns out to be the attachment site of those hemidesmosomes. Uh, Okay. Okay. So sense. I guess I, I guess we have a pretty good reason to believe it's an organic layer now, or why the organic layer is important because hemidesmosomes cannot connect to the mineral stuff. Yeah, that's that makes sense because I was yeah. always before you, you explained this, I was also have the kind of question like how a cell can directly attach on some calcified yeah, layer. That was that was just impossible. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it looks like that's the evidence. Right. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. we have the organic membrane. And in order to connect to the shell, 
um, that's the need that I'm going to use the hemidesmosome. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay. So hemidesmosomes connected not only to the tissue underneath but also to the shell on top via the organic membrane. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So um, this is the last slide or last picture where it shows their microscope images and. Instead of talking about the cell junctions between the mantle epithelium and other ones, this time they're talking about cell junctions between mantle epithelial and other mantle epithelium. Right? So they basically separated, here's the one, the green one, here's another one, the yellow one, here's the one, the red one. They're all mantle epithelial cells and the cell junctions are really crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like a straight line. Mm -hmm. It's really, really crazy. And I just want to take this second to point out the biggest joke of this paper. Right? Let's read the uh, little caption together. Right? Um, TM micrographs, linear linkage, well visible are the tonal filaments. I don't know what to I can't see anything. If you're tonal asking filaments? me. No, no, I'm talking about the well visible part. Oh. That's the biggest joke in this paper, okay? Look, because I honestly, if you look at this, that's a nucleus. Hmm. Yeah, that's. Looks like it. Well, I mean, that's all I can say. I can't even make out that this is probably rough ER. I didn't know that it was actually a cell boundary. Now, that's insane. Right? So when they look at this cell boundary, they're able to see that there's tonal filaments there. Now here's the thing. What did Dr. Shu say was the major difference between adherence junctions and desmosomes? The components of the transport factor versus animated bone. Yeah, so the adherence junctions use the actin, and then the desmosomes use the intermediate filaments. Guess what? A tonal filament is the name of the intermediate filaments that connects desmosomes oh. together. Okay, so there you go. We have evidence that they are connected to each other via desmosomes. Okay. okay. So the mantle epithelial cells are connected to each other via desmosomes because they found tonal filaments. So yeah, that's the uh, um, that's the last of their pictures. The rest of them is basically schematics to show mm -hmm. their version of the cell secretion. So we'll go through those real quick. This is the first one, Figure Eight, which basically shows. Um, if you look at the these parts with the unfinished, unfinished as in not blue, right? Blue is finished. Then they're gonna build. See how it's bigger in this one? Uh -huh. So they secrete the shell, and then after now you see the blue is starting to come down because it's finished. The blue is the organic layer. What's that mm -hmm. for again? Attachment. Attachment to the mantle epithelial cells, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first one. The second one. Um, shows the elongation of the fibers. So just look at the red line. What's the red line doing from here to here? Elongated. Yeah, it's getting bigger, right? So if the red line is going bigger, notice that the mantle epithelial cells were stationary. And so if you want to increase the length of the fiber, then different mantle epithelial cells are working on the same fiber. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. So like this red one used to be worked on by the, the green bee. And then after it surpasses the green bee, now A is going to start working on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the green bee is now secreting the organic layer, and the pink A is now secreting more calcium carbonate mm -hmm. to make it longer. And then once it goes past, and this one's going to start secreting the calcium carbonate, A is going to start secreting the organic layer. Well, they did put a, some mitochondria there. Yeah. That's oh, right, 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 right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it looks more like an Easter egg. Is that right? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Cool. So let's just go over all the steps to making the shell, starting from this. Right. The first step is you have to create the mantle epithelial cells. They're formed in the mantle group right here. Okay. But guess what? The shell is not here. The shell's over there. So how do you think the cells go from here to here? They just migrate. They migrate as a conveyor belt. Yeah. Okay. So these cells they just migrate this way in order to get in contact with the shell. Okay. Looking at the placement of the mantle epithelium cells versus the shell, which part of the shell does it form the first? <laughs> the primary layer. Uh, yes, but there's a layer before that. But you're on the right track, right? The first one you encounter is actually the oh, periostrum, okay. the tiny little organic. And then the primary layer, and then finally the fibrous layer, because like, if it goes this way, it encounters them in that direction. You guys see that? So yeah. one, two, three, in that direction. Oh. Okay, so it secretes those. Once it's done, um, like the primary layer is for lengthening, and the fibrous layer is for what again? Thickening. 
Thickening, yeah. Okay, so now that you're on to making the fibrous layer and thickening, then the next step is to basically secrete calcium carbonate to make each fiber. Once you're done secreting the calcium carbonate, then you have to finish it with what? The organic, the organic layer, right? The blue stuff. Right, you gotta finish with the organic layer, and then the last step is to attach the cells to the organic layer via hesitation. Okay, so then um, the final thing we can do is get to the conclusion. And this paper was pretty hard to read because like, I didn't know a lot of this stuff. It was kind of boring and the figures it, re it kept referencing were on different pages and I had to keep going back and forth. So luckily, they had the courtesy of actually providing us a nice, you know, very straightforward con conclusion. So we can read those together and right. make sure we covered everything right here. Okay, so number one. Oops. Okay, it is shown for the first time that extra pallial space between the fibers and outer membrane of epithelium is either non existent or extremely narrow because they couldn't really see the transition. Okay, um, in the case of the fiber, it is under tight cellular contact and cellular control, the hemidesmosomes. Okay, our results do not support mineral transport by the organelles, rather, the secretion directly. Okay, sounds like a goblet cell. Yeah. It does, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, number two. Um, more than one cell contributes to the formation of calcite fiber. Yes, we saw that in the last image. Or, I mean, what they, they drew it themselves, but yeah, we saw it. Okay, extracellular organic membrane is secreted only onto the proximal convex surface of the fiber. That's the last one. Right? So, like, it starts at the top and they just secrete from the bottom. Okay, and the bottom is always, they don't secrete this way or above. Okay? Um, fibers are not individually or completely sheathed by separate organic membranes. I didn't explain this before, but that blue line is continuous through all of them. Okay, the organic membrane is mm -hmm. continuous. Okay, secretion of calcite by epithelial cells occurs at sites where the organic membrane is absent. Oh, okay, so basically the fuzzy parts is where the secretion is occurring. Mm -hmm. Once the extracellular membrane at the base of the fiber is secreted, the cells of the outer mandothelium are attached to the hemidesmosomes. Okay, sounds good. This keeps it close to the shell and stabilizes. Okay, sounds good. Right. Okay, brachiopod fiber cyclic one, oh, sorry, apical OME cell membrane. Detachment of epithelial cell membrane from the organic membrane of previously formed fibers. Okay, so I guess so. If you want to produce a new one in between, you have to detach from the old ones first. Um, secrete calcite for the new ones. Okay, so now you're making a new fiber, and then once you finish making the fiber, then you make the membrane, the organic membrane on the outside. Okay, attachment via hemidesmosomes. Explain that. Okay, calcite secretion is suspended where the proximal organic membrane terminating the secretion of the fiber is formed, and they're resumed in locations where they detach from the cell membrane by resorption of the hemidesmosomes. So in order to detach, they get, get rid of the hemidesmosomes to create the new fiber after that. Okay, so like if you have an old fiber right here, it's the organic layer with the hemidesmosomes. If you want to create a new fiber here, then you have to detach and start secreting. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. Okay, the fibrous layer of rinconeliform brachiopod shells is a hybrid fiber composite that has an overall plywood-like organization. We saw in figure one, um, not figure two, I think. With the basic mineral units, the fibers, there you go, mineral units, the fibers, right, being assembled in a microstructure resembling anvil type arrangements, so like one here, one here, one here. Okay, uh, the microstructure compares to the brick wall arrangement of the aragonite tablets and five valves um, rather than simple bricks generated by pyro fibers. Okay, hmm. any questions on that stuff? So actually, well, no. it's, yeah. uh, I don't have a question, but uh, just in general, I try to comment on, on this paper. But the reason I, I give you this paper is I, I kind of wanted you to read something about the the bed valves or you know the the uh, the gastropod, something yeah. like that. Uh -huh. So this one and and this one's really related to a recent my recent submitted grant about you know the formation of the shell, how that's going to be affected by the environmental factors. But in order to do that, we'll have to understand at least the basic mechanism of how the shell generated. Yeah. So this paper tells a whole lot of things about it. When I read it, to be honest, a lot of details 
I need to figure out or even try to Google it somewhere yeah. else. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm I'm glad you actually spent. If, I feel like you spent a lot of time reading this, and it, yeah, it's, it's a lot of details you presented. It's it's really helpful. Um, yeah, just keep it up. So I'm hoping that for our f- uh, future presentation, you know, you guys can all spend some time at least to to completely understand this. A lot of details. Uh, what I really like the, the detail you presented uh-huh. is really helpful to understand. You know, to help us to understand because we don't. I believe most of us we don't really have much of the background for the shellfish, mm-hmm. you know. But you you did good for 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 that. And so you so like um, continuing on with that thought of like keeping up with it. I have a disclaimer here. I'll, um, <laughs> okay. Hold on. Um, uh, like I, I don't think I can do this every time. <laughs> like, I spent too much time on it. But I, there is something that I want to do every time. Okay, I want I want to make this fun, so we should bring snacks. Okay. Yeah. I think Dr. Shu is way ahead of me though, so that's good. We're on the same page. Well, the snacks for lucky days, yes. And it also depends on how many people we're going to end up with for her. No, no, here's the thing. Like, the presenter brings food. Oh, the presenters bring food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I can try to bring food for the every every time. But oh, we have double. We like, yeah, uh, you know, we just try to pro- provide, it, uh, provide enough for, for everybody. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> you know, I. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I if you're asking me to give you the paper, uh, the first thing I'm, I'm thinking, probably not to save you time. <laughs> it's probably to kind of ask you to spend a lot of time on it. At least, you know, during this process, you, you get to learn a lot of things that you don't know before. Mm-hmm. And also, I'm hoping that this is going to be contributing to your, to your project. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and if you wanted to, say, like, get the paper yourself, that's even better. So yeah. next time... I, I'm gonna no, I wasn't ask around. I was just yeah, I know. I'm gonna ask. I was just saying that, like, words. if you get, um, <laughs> I'm gonna ask around first. You know, you, you, you guys... can find your paper on the first day. Plus, um, I wanted Doctor Shu to find my first paper to take off the stress of having to find one. So you want, you want to see how high the bar is. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that that's another reason too. Yeah, so I know which papers to look. Uh, we don't have any kind of limitation for. Well, Next time I'm gonna choose a six page paper. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do have a certain limitation, but not a whole lot. You can choose, you know, choose the the paper in pretty much all fields, but you can't do the paper like say it's related to education. Right? We, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we don't do that. We just don't. We have to do something like related to the the biology, right? Yeah. And also, don't do the review paper. Oh, I hate those. Yeah. So no, long. no sense to present a review paper. Well, this is my opinion. I think this. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's I, 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 We just needed to have the peer review paper like this. Um, again, I'm gonna ask after this if you guys have the candidates or the papers you think is good to want to present. Feel free to do so. If if not, you know, I'll give you a week. If I don't hear anything, I have to sign a paper. Yeah, because you know, I, I can't wait for too long. You know, uh, I'll give you enough time to to, to prepare. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Good, luck, Andrew. All right, good job. Uh, I have to go to work, otherwise. I'd... It's alright.